Hi, I'm Johnny Holko. I'm a mixed media visual artist here at Space for Art. And today I'm going to be walking you through the techniques of paper marbling, specifically the Japanese technique of suminagashi. Now here is an example of what the finished product will be for today. Every one of these prints is unique and one of a kind. Because of that, this technique was actually used as an anti-forgery tool on official government documents, similar to how we have those crazy holographics and intricate patterns on currencies today. There's a bunch of different forms of marbling from various parts of the world, and certain techniques use different materials, but suminagashi is one of the oldest techniques used in paper marbling, and it only uses a couple materials that you can find from your local art store, so I thought it would be a nice and simple technique to teach you today. Suminagashi translates to floating ink, which is a great description as everything we're doing today actually occurs on the surface of the water. This is a super fun, easy, and relaxing technique. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the few ingredients that you need to get going. First, you'll need some water, preferably filtered water. Tap can work sometimes, but in a couple areas, harder water sources may affect the results of this, so feel free to experiment, but I would go with filtered. You'll need a shallow dish to hold the water. This is actually where we will be doing the marbling. Keep in mind that the size of your dish will dictate the size of the paper that you can pull. So this sheet was obviously done in a much larger dish, but for the sake of this tutorial, I will be doing a smaller batch today. You'll need Sumi ink. This is a charcoal based ink that you can find at most local art stores. You'll need a surfactant, which that is just a fancy word for something that lowers the surface tension of water. Today, I will be using ox gall. This is something you can find in the paint aisle of an art store. If you can't locate ox gall, uh, there's another product called Kodak Photo Flow that you can use, which you should be able to find online. You'll need two calligraphy brushes, one for each of these liquids that I just told you about. Um, the important thing with this is you want something that has a pointed end and can hold a decent amount of liquid. So if you have a different type of brush and want to try it, that should work. Just keep that in mind. You'll need two small containers for each of the liquids. Shot glasses work great in this case. Um, it's just something that you can dip each brush into. If you need something disposable, I recommend using Dixie cups. You'll need some plastic wrap or a tarp. This is for allowing your prints to dry. So anything that is watertight, if you have a space that is already set up for this, that's great. But a quick $1 tarp from Home Depot should do it. And lastly, you will need the paper to take your prints on. Feel free to experiment with different types of papers. You'll get different results. Uh, papers with excessive siding in them, that's the glues and adhesives that's added to paper, that will get in the way of your results. So try and avoid that. That's papers that are like acid free or like printer paper has a lot of that. Um, I recommend using newsprint. It's super cheap and it's used in a bunch of other crafts and it's very easy to access. Um, again, feel free to try out different papers, see what works, see what doesn't. You may like what happens with the different types of papers. This is an example of a sheet of paper that had too much siding in it or the glues and adhesives. So it didn't allow the ink to be absorbed in as immediately as this process needs. You can see the difference here. The swirls are exactly as they were on the water, just transferred right to the paper. And here you have almost a watercolor effect where the, the borders started to bleed together. This is just an example to show you in case you're getting a result like this. Maybe try a different paper. Okay, now we're ready to begin. So pour some of your filtered water into your dish. About a fingernail deep is totally fine. Again, everything's happening on the surface of the water, so it doesn't really affect anything how deep this water is. And sometimes you'll want to just take a thin strip of paper 
and just sweep it across the surface to make sure that you're getting any sort of dust or anything off of there. Make sure that you have some of your Sumi ink and some of your Oxgall in each of your two containers and get a brush out and ready, one for each liquid. It's nice to have a little paper towel down or maybe some plastic wrap underneath your work surface so that you're able to avoid making any sort of mess. So to begin, you'll wanna take your two brushes, hold them vertically like this, and dip them in your two liquids. Make sure to tap off any excess liquid so that you don't get any drips. And now what you wanna do is just lightly tap these two brushes onto the very surface of the water. So you don't wanna to penetrate too deep, just find that surface of the water. So it may take a moment. I recommend stabilizing with your elbows and just going slow at first until you really have a feel for it. At first, it's gonna be very light and hard to see, so just keep adding back and forth between the two liquids. Every couple of, of rings just dip back into your ink and add more. That seems to be a good amount for now. So once you have a sufficient amount of rings into your dish, you can start to manipulate it with different tools. This is where I encourage you to get creative with what you use and how you use it. I'm gonna use a pin, but really you can use anything you want to introduce some new movement to the piece. So just play around with different things. See what, what effects you get. And just have fun with it. Let the swirls move about. You can also try blowing on it with your breath or even with a straw. And at any point, you can add more ink. And you'll see the more ink you add, the darker it seems to get. So it's totally up to you. Sometimes I like it to look a little lighter. Sometimes I want that deeper, rich tone with the ink.
All right. Once you are pleased with the swirls that you've found in your dish, you are ready to take a print. Now taking a print is just an instant transfer of ink to paper. So it will essentially be what you see in the dish is what you get on the paper. So as soon as you like what you're seeing, hold your paper above the dish. What helps I find is to bow the paper in the middle and then lay the two edges down. This helps avoid any bubbles. So here we go. Press it down to make sure that the whole piece of paper has gotten nice and soaked up by the water. And then lift it up. And there you go. All your swirls are now trapped in the piece of paper. Let the excess water run off the edges before you transfer it over to your plastic wrap. And then lay it nice and flat to dry. You'll see there's still a little bit of ink floating around. This is great and can just be added upon once again. There really is no right way to do this, so experiment, play, make sure to have fun with it. All right, I am liking how this is looking, so I'm gonna grab another piece of paper and take another print. So you're gonna wanna let all those bubbles soak in. Make sure it's nice and full. And there you go. And again, you're only capturing what's happening on the surface. So you can see some of that ink is actually dropping to the bottom of the dish. It'll make it look a little murkier, but only what's on the surface will get captured. So you are okay if some ink still floats in the bottom. All right, welcome back. 
So it's been 24 hours and we've let our prints completely dry. After that, we stack them all together and place them under a heavy flat object to press out any wrinkles. And once you've done that, you're just about wrapped up with the entire process. You now have your very own homemade marbled paper and a new set of skills. This tutorial is by no means the only way to do this technique. It is just a launching point for you to begin your exploration into the fun world of paper marbling. If things didn't work out the first time, try a new paper, maybe try a different water source. There's so many factors that go into it and there's so many ways to play around with this technique. I hope you had a fun and relaxing time learning about this traditional Japanese technique and that you can share it with your friends and family in the future.